Hello everybody, welcome to another Valheim video. Today we're going to be looking at one of the coolest seeds I've ever found. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'll show you what Iron Gate has said is probably going to happen to continents after the Ashlands release. But that's just one small part of the puzzle, because let's be real, most people who play Valheim, they're going to experience the earlier parts of the game. That's what makes picking a base so tricky, isn't it? You don't want to pick a spot and then just get over it straight away and move on. You want to pick somewhere that has all that you need so that you can keep playing from that base and have fun and go explore other biomes and still be in the same base. That's why this continent is so incredible. Throughout the rest of the video, I'll be hammering down why this continent is the coolest continent that I have ever seen. You can also access exactly what you're seeing, whether you're on Xbox or on PC, by making a new world. You can call it whatever you want. Just make sure that the seed is R-I-I-T-O, all lowercase. The Rito seed is where you will get this continent. The spawn point's over here, so you'll have to sail once. And once you make it to this meadow, you'll never have to sail again. I mean, that's not totally true, because there are these little stretches here. This choke point, and also this choke point. But aside from those two spots, you'll be able to access all the way up to the deep north, all the way down here to the Mistlands and even the Ashlands. That's why I'm so obsessed with this continent. Not only does it have a great starting meadow, but it also has all of the bosses after Ether. But let's not get too distracted by the endgame in the Ashlands, because the reality is the swamps and crypts, alongside with mountains, these two things are going to be what really limit your actual base. You see, most hours spent in Valheim by players occurs in the meadows, black forests, mountains, and the swamp. So does it really make sense to cater a whole base around what might happen in the future? Personally, I don't think so. I think you should focus on the part of the game that works that people play now. How do you make that as fun as possible? And that's where this continent is so incredibly powerful. Common experience in Valheim is to think you've come across an incredibly large mountain or swamp only to find out that it's actually tiny and, even worse, none of the resources you want are even on it. And that's why having a big swamp and a big mountain nearby is such an important part of the early gameplay experience in Valheim. That's why I recommend this continent to you, because if you commit to building a base in the meadows, not only will you have access to Hildur, but there's also a river going through the biome, this river here, and the river leads to this incredible swamp. You see this nonsense? There's fire spawns and crypts right next to the water. There's even ridiculousness like that. What is that? And you can see that this swamp has a decent amount of crypts. This isn't enough for the entire game, but it is plenty for the early progression and then all you would have to do is just go a little bit south and boom, look at all of these. So close by, all the iron you need, and Bone Mass Spawner is even right here. And what's even crazy is the Elder and all the Black Forest you need to utilize this swamp in progression is right here. I mean, look at this. That mountain is the same mountain that that swamp borders. And the Elder Spawn is right here. And you can see that this very swamp has easy access to water, and then a river going right through the very meadow that Hildur occupies. It really is great synergy. There's even this little spot of plains here to spice things up. But you could cover this with campfires and block it off if it was giving you too much trouble. But personally for me, that's one of the reasons that I find this continent to be so preferable. The continent features a lot of different biomes bordering each other, and this makes Valheim more interesting because witnessing enemies fight each other, it just really spices the game up and makes things more unpredictable. And as I mentioned before, for most people, the mountain access 
and the swamp's access are really the priority. These are the factors that determine the longevity of your base spot. And really, for the beginning of the game, this is all that you need. It's got everything to prepare you for your fight with Motor. As far as I'm concerned, once you kill Motor, that's when the end game in Valheim really begins. And for the Valheim end game experience, the whole continents that supplied you with iron and black forest and mountains in the beginning, they're just not gonna cut it. They're not gonna be difficult enough anymore. Now what you'll need are long stretches of plains filled with goblin villages that you can decimate, raid, and pillage. Gone are the days where the mountains instilled fear in you. These days you actively seek the biggest, most challenging biomes because you've become strong enough to handle it and explore. And that's why in these situations you'll need to be able to progress into a more appropriate area. Let's call this the early end game. Because the true end game of Valheim isn't even out yet, the Ashlands and the Deep North. But the glory of this continent is it stretches so far that it even accommodates those biomes that have yet to be developed. Because while the midsection of this continent features stretches of plains filled with goblins and large mountains, this is only the beginning of the challenge, because the Mistlands, that's where it really gets tough. And you see, all one needs to do is cross this narrow little gap here, and then this axis is the true endgame so far. A vast Mistlands, plains, mountains, and then a quaint little stretch of Black Forest that we could build a base in and prepare. You can see that black forest right here. Even the queen spawn, which is going to be important in order to get what you need to go traverse the Ashlands, which will just be a short skip across the ocean to come. Congratulations, you made it to the end of the video. So now I'm going to show you how Iron Gate has suggested they're going to resolve the terrain problem. Because I was actually wrong in one of the videos I made recently, where I assumed it would be just like the Mistlands. They actually have made comments that indicate that they're going to force the islands to change. But what does that mean exactly? And here's what we know so far. And keep in mind, this is all speculation. I'm sharing the most recent information I have, but this is based off something developers shared two or three months ago, okay? So you can see here the same world, but with the Ashlands that the developers are currently using, update applied. It literally gets rid of this extra terrain in the middle. And if you look at the differences, particularly in the land that they remove, you can see that what gets removed are the flat areas. Whereas the areas where the mountains are, or the high peaks, they sort of remain, right? Based on that picture they shared, it would seem that all of this stuff, or maybe something like this, all of this would be eliminated. Because what they want is for you to sail to the Ashlands. So we can assume that all of this basically is going to go away, and then the Ashlands continent itself will be right here. This means that this continent here is probably a great spot to build an Ashlands preparation base. This way, you could have a really challenging Mistlands endgame experience where you build some awesome base, and as long as you never went south of this queen area, then probably, of course I could be totally wrong here, but probably when they apply the update, all this land is going to get removed. Meaning you could just make a base up here somewhere, and then you'll be ready to sail right to the Ashlands, experiencing it the way that they say is best, by boat. If you want to support my work, consider renting your own dedicated Valheim server. And if you want more Valheim videos on YouTube in general, then consider liking this video or any other Valheim video so YouTube shows you more.